What's up folks, welcome back for part five of our complete beginner's guide to mandolin series. And in this video, we'll be checking out the right hand in detail. And the right hand is one of the most important parts of our technique on the mandolin because it's in charge of so many musical aspects, right? We have our tone, our timing, our volume, our articulation, all that stuff comes from the right hand. So we're gonna explore some different things to help you get the most out of your instrument with your right hand. So first up, let's review our pick hold again, right? Remember we have our pick resting on the side of our index finger. I've just got it on the last joint of my index. And then we lay our thumb across the top of the pick just to have this really nice, relaxed, loose pick grip. Again, I kind of keep these other fingers curled up naturally underneath the pick. Then we rest our right arm across the body of the instrument to play the pick kind of towards the bottom of the fretboard, right? That's the sweet spot. And another thing about the pick is that we usually want to come at the strings at an angle. That's why it's really helpful to have your neck at this angle already because if you're playing your pick downwards, you're really only hitting the string with the forward edge on your downstrokes and then the back edge on the upstrokes like this. And the reason for that is if you play with the pick parallel to the strings like this, you hear a little bit more of that high end pick click and less of the warmth of the instrument itself. Whereas if you tilt the neck up and come at an angle with the pick like this, all of a sudden there's a much darker, warmer tone. Another interesting thing about the right hand here is that some professional mandolin players have some differences of opinion about how to use the right hand on the instrument. You might see some folks plant their fingers on the face of the instrument as a point of reference to know where the strings are. Or you might see some other folks plant their wrist behind the bridge here as another fixed point of reference. Or another common approach is this third option, which is having more of a floating reference point with your right hand. This is where you plant your forearm on the face of the instrument as an anchor and allow the back of your wrist to brush behind the bridge on these deadened strings. That way you still have a point of reference on the mandolin, but it's floating. And I usually stick to this third approach just because it feels more natural to me, but you should try out all three of these and see what works for you. And we haven't even talked much about where the power of the pick comes from, right? Does it come from your forearm or come from your wrist? Because there's different opinions about that as well. And for me, I kind of like to use both. And with that floating point of reference technique that I use for my right hand, it makes sense to use my forearm as a way of relocating from one string to the next and as a way of driving the pick through the string with a little bit more power. But I still use my wrist as a precision tool to feel where the strings are and to follow through to make sure that I'm playing both strings in the set. So spend some time messing around with these different techniques to see what works best for you. And one of the best ways to practice this is in front of a bathroom mirror or in front of a webcam, just so you can see that outside perspective of what's going on with your right hand. But all that aside, we haven't even talked about the most important aspect of the right hand, which is how we alternate the pick in time with the music. So here's the analogy that I like to give. Do you remember those old mechanical metronomes with the arm and the weight that moves back and forth and clicks with the music? It just keeps moving back and forth no matter what's going on. And that's exactly what you want your right hand to look like when you're playing. And along those lines, we're always playing our downstrokes on the beats in the measure, right? So in 4-4 four, four time, we have four beats. We're gonna move our hand down four times for that measure. It should sound something like this. One, two, three, four. But you notice in order to move my hand down a second time, I had to move my hand up in between that down. And so I keep moving my hand like this no matter what, even if I'm not playing my pick against the strings. So we were just playing quarter notes there, right? Where we had one beat per note. But what about if we have two beats per note? What if we played half notes? What would that look like for our right hand? So we'll still play those half notes with downstrokes, right? But to fill in this extra time in between these longer notes, let's keep our right hand alternating to still embody that tempo, right? That way you're still moving your hand downwards for the beats, even if you're not playing the beats, right? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So that might seem like a little extra work right now, but it makes sense when we come over to playing eighth notes, which are twice as fast as quarter notes, right? So here we're gonna keep our right hand alternating and play all these notes with down, up, alternation. So it looks like this. One and two and three and four and. So if you keep your right hand alternating at a consistent rate like this, it becomes a lot easier to shift from one rhythm to the next and still stay at the same tempo. 
But the big challenge comes from when you start alternating across different sets of strings, right? And we don't want whatever string we're playing on to affect what pick direction we're using, right? We're gonna keep alternating with the rhythm no matter what. So even if you're crossing from your G string to your D string on two consecutive eighth notes, it might make sense to do two down since you're going in that direction anyways, but it's actually gonna create more work for yourself to get back on track and to make sure those downstrokes are landing on the beats. So I've devised a set of right hand exercises here that will help us feel this out a little bit more in depth. And we'll check these out on screen here, but if you want your own PDF copy of these exercises, you can find them on page 15 and 16 of our companion ebook. So grab your mandolin, grab your transcription if you want, and let's check out exercise number one here. So all these exercises are eighth notes, which means that we're gonna keep our right hand alternating on the strings all the time. In this first exercise, we're playing one downstroke on our G string, followed by an up, down, up on our D string like this. So when you string all those notes together, it should sound something like this. Next, we're gonna try out that same idea on our D and our A string. So now we have one note on our D string, followed by three notes on our A string. So we have down, up, down, up. All right, the pattern continues on our A and E string now for number three. Check this out. And for this fourth exercise here, we're gonna mash all that stuff together. So we're starting out with the G and D variation. Then we're gonna do the D and the A variation. Lastly, the A and the E. Before working our way back down to the D and the A. And then we can repeat the whole exercise again after that. Let's check it out. There's definitely a lot of right hand leaps in that one, but be sure to keep that right hand alternating no matter what. All right, for the next set of exercises here, we're just gonna invert that idea. So now we're starting out with our open E string, followed by three notes on our open A. Should sound something like this. All right, let's take that same idea to our A and our D strings now. and then down to the D and the G strings as well. All right, let's mash all those ideas together as well. So starting out with our E and A strings, then down to our A and D strings, then we have our D and our G strings, and then work our way back up. So now we have A and D, and then the whole exercise repeats. Let's try that out. All right, one more set of exercises here. In all those previous ones, you'll notice that we were transitioning from one string to the next using upstrokes. But in this set, we'll be using downstrokes to go from one string to the next. So check this out. The first one, we're doing two notes on our G string, down, up, and then we're doing two notes on our D string, right? Down, up again. So here's the first exercise. Not too bad, right? Now we're doing the same thing on our D and A strings. Check this out. All right, now on to our A and E strings. And lastly, let's mash all those together, right? So we have G and D, then we have D and A, then we have A and E. Back down to D and A. Here's what all that sounds like together.
Well, nice work, folks. We've been doing a lot of heavy lifting in the technique department, looking at the left hand and the right hand with all these exercises these past couple lessons. But in the next lesson in our beginner series here, I'm excited to get back to playing some real music with you. So coming up next in part six of the Complete Beginner's Guide to Mandolin, we'll be checking out a classic song called The Worried Man Blues. This one dates back to the Carter family and a bunch of bluegrass artists play this one. You'll find it at Slow Jams Worldwide. And we're gonna check out a simple version of the melody along with some open drone string sounds to help flesh out the melody a bit more. So check it out and be sure to like and subscribe here on YouTube and head over to our Patreon page if you wanna grab that PDF companion book to go with these lessons as well as the backing tracks and a bunch of other stuff too. So I'll see you in the next one.